I'm a little irked. And I'll get to why. I'm not going to let it sully the whole proceedings. But I'm starting from irked. I said that Joe Biden got rid of daylight savings time. Not true. The Senate voted to make it permanent. The House has yet to vote on it. There was a vote scheduled in March at 1 p.m. Everyone showed up at 2. I said the character, uh, the Star Trek character, Scotty, was not in The Next Generation. And if you're wondering why your internet was slow last Friday, I think it's because all the tubes were jammed with jackals telling me, Scotty uh, did in fact appear in a TNG episode, Relics. <laughs> and this is interesting. Scotty survived for decades in a derelict ship. <sighs> Ooh. We talked about uh, the Mandela effect. The reason we were talking about Scotty in the first place is in Star Trek, they never said, beam me up, Scotty. You know what's really nice is how this is it's a beautiful shadow, the way it's falling. It's just making my... Uh, Head looks super symmetrical. <laughs> um, no one ever said beam me up. Scotty, uh, in the Sherlock Holmes book by Sir, you always leave that part out, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, uh, Sherlock Holmes never said elementary, my dear Watson. Um, I guess the actual line was Watson would say something lines like, Holmes, how did you deduce? And he'd go, I used my brain, dude. <laughs> you know, if I could go back in time and m meet anyone, when people say if you could have di a dinner with anyone living or dead, I think I'd most want to meet the first guy who said no <laughs> Sherlock as a joke. <laughs> it, just, it, may, it must have been amazing. The first time. Obviously, it gets old, but the first time someone said no to Sherlock. First Sherlock Holmes, like 1887, so what do we think, 40 years? Before, what do we, about 40 years, I would imagine, until the first time someone made the joke? I don't know. Maybe it's like the, after the Hindenburg. They're talking about it, and someone says, I think there's gonna be a real blow to Zeppelin commercial travel. No, sure. it just would have been amazing. Uh, Millie Vanilli. I said they were caught when their song skipped on the You and Girl You Know It's True. It was on the Girl You Know. It was right out of the, it was, I guess that was where they, they knew the game was up. I also said that Shoemaker was a fan of Millie Vanilli and he pretty, pretty angrily corrected me on that. So I'm sorry. According to him, fans of Millie Vanilli are known as Millie Vanillis. Or main iliacs. Uh, this was a joke we had. Archaeologists in Laos, I said Laos, recently discovered an ancient tooth thought to have belonged to an extinct human species that was lodged in a cave wall. Experts believe their last words were not cake. I then went on, joke was written fine. I then went on and explained the joke and said he thought the wall was cake. I did not realize, and, and shame on me, it was a, a female. Skull, tooth, I guess the tooth, and then they work their way back. Tooth, skull, body, and then they know. But shame on me for assuming it was a man. Women can also bite a wall thinking it's cake. <laughs> Someone else said that joke doesn't work because cake hadn't been invented yet. Is that an invention? Cake? Maybe go to see Captain Poles. Maybe we'll put that up there. Do you think cake is an invention? 
cake wasn't, it, it had, cake hadn't been invented yet. That's why people were biting wall. They were so desperate for it. That's how they were trying to go about finding out if it had been invented. They're just biting everything. Kimmel, oh boy. Jimmy Kimmel, last week, you know, he got COVID. He went on his show after he got better, called me out by name, saying that of all the talk show hosts, I hadn't reached out. I apologized. To make up for it, I sent him here. You watched me put soup in a FedEx box to send to him. Then he got COVID again. And obviously, I don't want him to have COVID, but pretty catbird see to me, because my soup's already en route. <laughs> my makeup soup is going to arrive. It's like, no one's going to beat my new soup. <laughs> Obviously, perfect world, he doesn't get COVID at all. Second place is how it's, how it's laid out for me. <laughs> Speaking of Kimmel, and this is why I'm a little irked. Dear friend Jimmy Kimmel, get well soon. Uh, can't host the show because he got COVID again. So uh, who fills in for him last night? Sandberg. Melania and Sandberg. So when I call Sandberg, nothing. No answer. Kimmel calls. Hello, Mr. Kimmel, sir. <laughs> oh, what do you need, Mr. Kimmel? Right away, Mr. Kimmel. Not gonna, I'm not going to call Samberg anymore. I'm, I'm taking that out of this equation. I am. I will just write him now, see if he's available. And we will see if he writes back. But, I mean, really, pretty heartbreaking that... I mean, it's almost like the way... The fact that he did Kimmel and he's not showing up for this, it's almost like he's valuing an 1130 network talk show more than corrections. <laughs> Uh, I said if Trump wrote a book, he would be the first person in history uh, to write one without ever reading one. A jackal, a very clever little jackal, pointed out, at minimum, he would be the second person that would be true of, uh, because it would also be true of the first person who ever wrote a book. <laughs> and there's a lot of answers to this. There's, nobody knows for sure what the first book was. So don't jackal me on this, okay? Because this is there are some things we can't know. But based on what I did, research-wise, it was Epic of Gilgamesh by James Patterson. <laughs> Not that one. It was his dad. It was cool. He had the idea to write a book when he was at the airport and he saw Hudson Booksellers. Um, Pizza Hut sent this hat. There we go. We had kind of mocked this up, and then they actually had it made. Um, Pizza Hut must have... Uh, there Because their Pizza Hut is coming on to us pretty hard. <laughs> Pizza Hut must have... <sighs> Sorry. Are you available right now? Are you in the middle of it? Yeah. <laughs> All right. We gotta go scroll back a long time to the last time we talked. Over there. Hey, what's up, dude? What's up, man? What'd you do last night? Oh, uh, I just coasted Kim. <laughs> yeah, everybody here is pretty bummed out that you would do that and not hang out with us. Well, you're in New York, is the problem. <laughs> Why I go there? Hey, um, I've been trying to talk to you for like five weeks because uh, Nick Cage wanted you to host SNL as him. Uh huh. Would you have done that? In a heartbeat. <laughs> Okay, so I've thought a lot about what I would write if that happened, and I want to give you the presence, the premise, and the first line, and I want you to just start. Okay. 
Okay, you as Nick Cage walk out to do the monologue, but the premise is you are John Travolta wearing a Nick Cage face. <laughs> and the first line of the monologue is, stop clapping! <laughs> Did you like hosting a talk show? No. <laughs> you look really good, though. I feel like the fact that you did a talk show last night, this is the best you've ever looked on FaceTime. Well, I shaved my face. The getting, getting like, having to prep for a guest, like, it's like being trapped hosting a dinner party. Yeah, I know all this. OK, bye. <laughs> I host one. Like, why would he tell me? I literally, it's what I do for a living. Where was I? Pizza Hut's coming on to us. Pizza Hut. Pizza Hut. <laughs> All right, hold on. I feel like the timing of that was really inopportune because I feel like this joke would have worked better. I'm gonna pretend like it didn't happen. Pizza Hut, shoot, Pizza Hut must have eaten some of their pizza because uh, they're thirsty. Pizza Hut is not a sponsor of corrections. I want to make that clear. One day they might be, however. They obviously watch corrections. We appreciate the engagement. Again, Pizza Hats is the only product that we're promoting today. You can go to pizzahats.com, I think. I can't remember if we bought that domain name. I feel like we did. Anyway, Pizza Hut is not a sponsor. But if they are, and all of a sudden, you know, correction starts brought to you by Pizza Hut. If all of you start saying, oh my God, I can't believe you sold out, I want you to know that is exactly what we will have done. <laughs> Pizza Hut is in the mix. We have another very exciting product in the mix as a sponsor. We talked about uh, Werther's, Werther's Originals. Um, this is so exciting. We didn't even know it was a product, but they reached out. Um, it's, a, it's a new candy um, by one of our favorite directors here. Uh, Werner's Originals. <laughs> Werner's Originals hard candy is a delicious butterscotch, the center of which is a gaping void. Vanna's original, because life sucks. I feel like we maybe just stumbled into a desk piece. Like sponsors who aren't so great. Put a pin in it, shoemaker. Trump, we said, he would have shot Patriot missiles at Mexico. Patriot missiles are anti-air. Tomahawk missiles would have been better. We also said jokingly that Mexico would obviously know it was America. And then we had a line of Mexico thinking maybe it was Costa Rica. I'm very happy to say we have a lot of Costa Rican viewers, each of whom told me that Costa Rica has not had an army since 1948. And let me just say, I don't think it's a mistake that you don't have an army. I think it's a mistake that you've told us. <laughs> We're a go on Costa Rica. <laughs> I said ear, I said ear pods. It's either air pods or ear buds. It's never ear pods. It's never air buds. Air bud, of course, was a movie about a dog who could play basketball. And I was reading up about it today. This is really cool. First movie written solely, 
So late night comedy writers would have something to reference for the next 25 years. Uh, we're talking about Madison Cawthorn and said uh, every rose has its Cawthorn. Some botanists engaged with us. Roses do not have thorns, they have prickles. There are three different classifications of sharp points. Thorns are modified branches. Spines are modified leaf structures. Prickles have no vascular material and are easier uh, to remove. So from now on, don't say thorns, say prickles. Tough news for the band Poison. <laughs> Not that tough. Thorn already doesn't rhyme with dawn. <laughs> so they're already halfway there if they want to go with prickles. <laughs> hey, this was some confusion because we made a joke because, you know, Madison Cawthorn both talked about getting invited to orgies by members of the GOP and also mentioned the GOP uh, doing cocaine and offering him a key bump. We showed a photograph, not real, of Chuck Grassley with a bowl of keys inviting the membership to a key party, and some of you thought we misunderstood what a key bump was. We know what a key bump is. A key bump is when you do cocaine off a key, and a key party is when you throw all the keys in the bowl and you pick one out, and that's your special friend for the night. I just think the important thing to remember is in the modern GOP, when you see a key, the only thing you know for certain is it ain't for doors. <laughs> so, last night's closer look, uh, we goofed on, I guess you could say Italian-American stereotypes. Someone reached out and said, I was lazy. Which breaks my heart because I then obviously take this to heart. And so I went to the office of Closer Looks head writer, Salvatore Gentili. <laughs> and you know, post show, he does not like to be bothered. He was uh, eating his prosciutto, <laughs> dumping his biscuit in his cappuccino. <laughs> tiny, tiny little napkin. It almost defeats the purpose because it covers so little of the shirt. Little napkin. And I, uh, he was like, who said this? <laughs> who said this about a girl's little? <laughs> hey, I do think he took it. I do think he took it to heart. <laughs> Just like every deli has its pickles. <laughs> so that'd work. Um, we've got three real special kids who work on this show. Um, they came to us via a program. Of, uh, of, of kids who wanted to break into the biz. And uh, we just try to provide them sort of in the door experience. Um, Seth Reese, Matt Goldich, and Ben Warheit. <laughs> and they write you burnt, and we call, they're the burn boys. That's how they're known around the office. And you burn is such a great sketch, and, and the one we did this week was a lot of fun. And uh, there were some new moves in it, and, and hopefully you guys enjoyed watching it as much as, as I enjoyed doing it. Now, unlike a closer look, we plan a closer look. Each closer look is planned a month in advance. Whereas, <laughs> you burnt, they find out about you burnt like an hour before we tape. So I don't want to be too hard on them because they're just pulling elements together. It's really unfair what we ask of them. And, and yet, it was both really funny and there were no mistakes, so I'm pretty psyched. I do tip my cap to the Burn Boys. Oh, wait. <laughs> there were a few. We did a really, uh, we burned uh, uh, people who post their Wordle scores. And we, and there was a right there, that's what it looked like. And uh, immediately you can see uh, people post it out because, you know, we're burning, uh, so that uh, is wrong. You wouldn't have two T's yellow. That would be gray. But um, not bad. That, uh, I mean, one mistake again, they have an hour to pull it together. Oh, right. Um, it says right here, AOL CDs. Everybody said, why is that an apostrophe S? That wouldn't be that. 
wouldn't be a possessive on CDs. So just two. Oh, it did say an eight hour road trip and then a sentence later said we were stuck in a turnpike for 10 hours. This is one person who pointed out all of these. <laughs> Also, um, we even talked about it backstage. I said, we're talking about Inspector Gadget, and I said, is he, um, is he from the 80s? And one of them, uh, I won't say his name, but I will say it's the same as mine, said, <laughs> no, I think Inspector Gadget's from the, uh, from the early 90s, and so that's what I said. Um, in their defense, in the Burn Boys' defense, none of them have the internet. <laughs> So everything is a, is a series of like instincts plus guesses. <laughs> they're very anti-technology. They're like, they're like the Amish without the work ethic. <laughs> but we, this is a real, um, this one, this one uh, killed me. Cause you know, I read, obviously I go, I go through these, right? You know that now. I go through all your corrections, and uh, there's no gatekeeping. If you, if you leave a correction, I'm going to read it. So we had a joke about Jason from Friday the 13th waiting for night to fall so that he could kill his victims. So I got a, this was a comment I got in the comment section. Hey, it's Scollins. <laughs> This is my first ever YouTube comment. Jason very often kills during the day, so I don't know if it's right to say he's waiting for night to fall. Maybe you're thinking of Dracula. <laughs> and it just, it breaks my heart because I have really gone out of my way to Scollins proof my life. <laughs> and for him to just sneak in like that is, uh, well, he got me. But uh, I do want to, um, Thank all my writers, you know, all jokes aside, everything I said is true. And I think we are done. <laughs>